In this video, we're going to take a look at populations and samples and differentiating between the two and, and also classifying the values that we have when we're working with those. First of all, to differentiate a population versus a sample, a population is all of the um, data from a particular group or all the members of a particular group. Often we think about people, but it could be lots of different things. A sample is just some of those uh, people or uh, animals or products or whatever. Okay, So population is all, it's everything. A sample is some. When we have values that we're working with that are coming from either of these groups, if it's a population, we call those values parameters. It's a parameter if it's coming from a population. If it's coming from a sample, we call it a statistic. Now, I want you to notice something here, and uh, this might be kind of helpful. So, do you see the S's? A sample is sum, and it the numbers are called statistics. Population is all. I wish I could think of a P word that would be all. Throw one in the comments if you can think of one. Uh, population is all, and a parameter is what we call the numbers coming out of there. So the differences between the two. Now, we can't always ask or get data from an entire population. That would be very difficult depending on the size of your population and so we have to rely on samples much of the time. In order for data to be uh, and conclusions to be valid from uh, data that we get from a sample, that sample must represent the overall population that you're trying to work with. So it's important that we can differentiate between the two and know, okay, so I'm working with a sample, this needs to represent the population. As an example, let's say we're dealing with the population of the world. Okay, that's a huge population. It would be impossible to take a census to get the data from every single person. So we can use a sample. Now, if we were to just choose, let's say, a hundred men from California, could that really, would that really be a good representation of the population? Obviously not, because there's a lot more than just men in the world, and they live in lots of different places other than just California. So it's extremely important that we pay close attention to our sample and make sure that it represents the overall population. So, for these first three problems here, the first three situations, we want to identify the population and the sample in the situation. So, before a nationwide election, a polling place was trying to see who would win. Officials contacted 100 randomly chosen voters of different ages. Okay, so the population is going to be all of the voters because that's what we're dealing with, the nationwide election and everybody that uh, is going to vote and then they contacted 100 randomly chosen voters it's a good idea that it was random that makes for a good sample and that is the 100 that were chosen that is our sample okay so then let's take a look at this next one a school principal wants to see which subject the 845 students in his school liked best. The first 77 students who came into the school were asked. Okay, so the population, that's everyone in this group, is the people at the school. And this time they give us the, the number of students at the school. There's 845 students in that entire school. Maybe we can't reasonably ask them all so we use a sample and the sample is this first 77 students so that'll be our sample okay so we ask that smaller group hopefully they represent the all of the students that are at that school 
Last one here, a musician wanted to see what people who bought his last album thought about the songs. A selection of 7,750 people who bought the album were surveyed. Okay, so the population that we're interested in, hmm, those are, that's typically the tougher one to differentiate is the population. Usually the sample's pretty obvious. They wanted to see what people who bought his last album thought. Okay, so the population would be all the people who bought the album. All who bought his album. That's what we're interested in figuring out. And so to determine that, we're going to look at a sample of 7,750 people who bought the album. Okay, so that is representing this larger group and that's another way to think about the population versus the sample is well, what is that sample representing who's the bigger group that we're trying to come up with some information about um, to to discover uh, what's going on in the situation okay then let's take a look at a couple other situations and let's differentiate to determine are these numbers parameters or are these statistics? And remember the difference if it's coming from a population, we call that the parameter that's coming from all and look for that word, sometimes that word even shows up and a sample of course is just some and we call that a statistic. So maybe if it's a survey that might be a way to tell that it's a statistic and not a parameter. So, a recent survey by the alumni of a university indicated that the average salary of 1,000 of its 30,000 graduates was $95,000. So, look for some of those key words that tell us where this information is coming from. Is it coming from all of the uh, members of the population or from just some? Well, look at this word right here, survey. Okay. And then right here it says 1,000 of its 30,000 graduates. So did we ask them all? Nope. So that means this must be a statistic. That's because it's coming from a sample, not necessarily um, the same as coming from the population. Okay. How about this one? The average salary of all employees at a certain sporting equipment manufacturer is $39,500. Look again for some of those words. Survey, some, sample, all. Hey, look at that. All. So because this is coming from all of the employees, this is the population that we're dealing with. And so this number right here would be a parameter because we know that that is the case for all of them. If we're looking at a, just a sample and a statistic, if we want to talk about the population, it's really a guess to know if those values are the same, okay? Because we didn't ask all of them. It's possible that they're different. Hopefully, we've chosen a good sample so that we can can figure some stuff out but a statistic is always we have to be careful to make sure that we don't uh, say something that maybe isn't true about the population depending on how that survey was taken so populations and samples to differentiate between the two the only way to get all the information or not the only but the, the term for getting information from the entire population is called a census. Uh, the census uh, happens every 10 years in the United States. We, they ask every single person for their information, but it's all. And remember, a uh, number coming out of that we call a parameter. If we're just asking some, that's a sample, and we call the numbers coming out of their statistics, and remember, we often will choose a sample rather than information from the whole population because it's simply not feasible to ask every single thing or look at every single piece. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.